Welcome, my name's Louise. Today we're going to cover on how to make curtains. But before I forget, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment and ring that bell. Thank you. You need to know the length of the curtain and the width that you need. So, measure the length from the top of the curtain rod down to how long you want it to hang. And then measure your width by measuring the whole of the rod. Rule of thumb, where you want your curtain to hang double will give you the right fullness. That's why I say measure the whole rod because it's going to be double what you need. This is for a pencil pleat curtain using a three inch tape. Now I put on at least 12 inches or more on the length. As I always say, you can always cut it off, but you cannot put it on. Now if you can, leave the fabric to hang for at least 24 hours. Fabric quite often will stretch, so you don't want to make a curtain and have to shorten it again. I always do the hem first and put the tape on later. It makes it a lot easier as you're only dealing with one length of fabric at a time. We need to check the bottom of the fabric is level. We do this by putting the two ends together. Make sure the salvage is straight and together. Lay it on the table. Do you see the ripple? That means the fabric's not cut level. So grab the fold, lift it up, shake it gently and lay it on the table. Now if you look carefully, the corners have moved. Get your ruler and make sure it is lining up 90 degrees along the fold. I'm using a 24 inch quilt ruler and a rotary cutter. They're very handy to have as you get a nice straight line. But you can use a tailor's chalk and a pair of scissors. Now cut the fabric right across the bottom. Make sure you cut all the way across both layers. You can see it is now nice and straight. Get yourself a piece of card. Make a three inch line across. This we will use for the hem. Place it on the fabric, pull your fabric over and place the edge on the line. Pin the fabric together. Now go right across. This way you don't have to keep the tape measure out all the time because the three inch isn't going to change. Get yourself a nice smooth block of wood. You're going to need it when you're ironing the curtain. Place your curtain on the ironing board. Press then put the block of wood on as soon as you can. You're probably asking why the wood? Well, tailors have used this for hundreds of years and it gives a nice, sharp, crisp crease. You can also use this wood technique for trousers to make sure you get a nice, crisp fold. It is very handy to know. Do it all the way across. If you find the curtain slips off, pin to the ironing board then you don't have to worry about it falling off. Once you have gone all the way across, make sure that all the pins have been taken out. You don't want to sew them in now. Get your card that you have marked and fold over the hem three inches. Use the card and go all the way across. As you are pressing, Again, use the block of wood. That way you get a very neat hem. Now, we are going to hand stitch the hem using the herringbone stitch. First, sew three stitches in one spot on the inside hem, as I'm doing here. Notice I'm starting from the opposite side than what you would normally sew, so your needle is facing the other way. This is how a herringbone stitch looks like. 
but on the main curtain only pick up, if possible, one thread. That way no one can see the stitches when they are hanging up. But on the folded part, I take a bit more fabric. You will find doing the stitch on the table and laying the fabric flat on the table a lot easier. Remember not to pull too tight. Keep it nice and loose but not over over loose. And just go all the way across until you come to the end. Now the lining. Use your card and fold over 3 inches and press all the way across. You don't need the block of wood here. When you've finished, fold up, take all the pins out again and fold it again 3 inches. Use your card. If you notice, I've put a pin there just to stop the lining from slipping off. Oh, before I forget, let me remind you that if you've got thermal lining or blackout lining, the rubber is in the inside of the curtain, not on the outside. Now I'm not hand stitching the lining, I will machine sew it. Go about a narrow foot deep, work it slowly as lining does have a habit of walking and twisting. If you find the lining is twisting, put a pin every so often, that will help hold it in place. Now I'll tell you a little secret. I do not cut my lining in half. I put a hem on both ends. Reason is I don't trust my measurements. Being a little bit dyslexic, also having to get the tape measure out every few minutes, I just want to sew the curtain. I will also always buy my lining a bit narrower than my fabric, about four inches give or take. It saves time not having to cut the lining narrower and wasting fabric. Now. Join the lining and the curtain, place right sides together. Make sure the lining at the bottom is two inches above the curtain as you don't want the lining showing when it's hanging. Do exactly the same on the other side. Let's recap. Put right sides together, lining two inches above the curtain. Pin all the way on both sides. Put the pins crossways, not long ways. I'll explain later why. Now, straighten out the curtain. Have the top on the table. The bottom where the hem is can hang on the floor if your table is not big enough. Like my table, it's not big enough. As you can see, I'm now pulling the top so that the fabric is level. Remember, your lining is narrow, so there is going to be a fold. So fold the one part of the curtain and the other side lie flat. Make sure that it does not bow in the middle. Then cut across all the way. I'm just going to remind you this is the top of the curtain. Now sew both sides. Always keep the fabric on the bottom as it is a looser weave. If you put the curtain on top, you will find that the lining will gather and not lie flat. On the other side, do not change and sew the lining underneath. You will find that the lining will shrink and not match. So never ever change. If you've sewn on the lining on the other side, then do exactly the same. Now back to the pins. Why I pin them sideways is that if I don't see a pin and sew over it, I'm less likely to break a needle. Also, they're easier to take out when you are sewing. Here is a little tip. There is a time when you do turn the fabric over. It is when you are coming to the end and you have a little bit more lining than fabric. Turn the curtain over, start from the bottom and pull the fabric a little bit, not too hard and the extra fabric underneath will disappear like magic. Now seal the seams by pressing, which means if you have a little gather it will flatten it out but also makes it easier if you want to open your seams or 
like I do is leave them closed but need to fold one of the fabrics over. Turn the curtain right way round and put it on the ironing board. Use your fingers to feel for the seam. Make sure it is on the curtain side. Then press. Continue all the way down and on both sides. Now fold the curtain long ways in half and pin the centre just at the bottom. Do the same with the lining fold it in half and pin the center. Join both in the center and pin together. But remember the lining must be two inches up. Open up and you will see the curtain is showing on both sides. Measure it. Mine measured one and a half inch. So now what I do is I will lie the curtain down and all the way up along the lining and the curtain I will measure inch and a half right up to the top. Do not trust the other curtain is going to do the same. So do exactly the same and take that measurement and measure all the way up. Remember to pin both sides. Now, you're going to need that piece of wood again. I found this a bit easier if I pinned the curtain to the ironing board as I was work going. But make sure the pins are nowhere near where you are pressing. Press both sides. You'll find that the wood will give you a nice crisp finish. It is well worth using. Start measuring from the bottom. But before doing this, just double check that the length you need is right. As my table is not a big table, I measure bit by bit till I get the measurement I want. My measurement was 87 inches. Mark the measurement with a pin. I would suggest measuring again to check you are right. The saying is, measure twice, cut once. Please excuse the filming here not enough sunlight and typically I only filmed this once. Now fold the curtain in half lengthways. Pin all the way up from the bottom as you can see what I'm doing here to where I have marked my measurement. Don't worry if your lining and your curtain aren't level up at the top you know that the bottom is level, so that's all you need to worry about at the moment. Now fold again in half, making sure that the lining is lying flat and is two inches above the curtain. As I am doing here. Notice I'm giving it a good shake. Pin all the way up again. To where your measurement is. I roll it up. I just find it easier so I haven't got too much to deal with at the bottom and I know it's lying flat. Now if you notice I'm taking all the markings and making sure there's a pin on each one of those markings. Then I open it out as I'm doing here. I then pull it open and move the center pin onto the other side, making sure it is in the same place. I then pull from pin to pin at the top so it levels up. 
Remove all the side pins that you've pinned, but don't remove the top pins. Now pin all the way across. We're going to be pressing it now. now. Don't panic about how much is left over. I normally use that to do the tie backs, but I'd want to know that I've got enough because like I'm saying, you can't put it on, but you can cut it off. Make sure the lining is straight underneath and tight. Now press it all the way along, making sure that the pins are out of the way. Use the pins to hold it in place. Press it, use your wood. Fold your other curtain in half. Lay the curtain you have just finished pressing and pin from the bottom to the other curtain till you get to the top where the fold is. Now put three pins, one on each side and one in the centre and do exactly the same as what you did with the other curtain. Pull it from pin to pin. Double check that it is right, that the measurement from the bottom to the top is exactly the same on all sides. It's worth here double checking. Don't presume, double check. Press the other curtain exactly the same as how you pressed the other. Now once more, double check that you've got the exact same measurement on both sides. If you've got someone to hold the one side of the curtain to the other, get them to measure it with you. Now sew the curtain tape on, but sew it opposite to what you think. Here I'll explain it all to you. First, fold the tape over to about 3 inches. Tuck inside the curtain. I pull the inside of the curtain back a little bit, as I show you here. We look very carefully. Fold it back and place it under the sewing foot. With the curtain tape underneath and the curtain on top. I can hear a few of you saying that's not how you sew a curtain tape. Well this way I know that I'm not going to get a rope effect on top. Haven't you ever sewn a curtain tape and come to the end and it's too long on the one side and too short on the other and the curtain doesn't lie nice and flat on top? Well this way you can guarantee that it will lie nice and flat. You won't need to put a hundred and thousand pins to try and keep it in place. Now only go a foot deep. Do not pull the curtain tape. Do not touch it. Just try and keep it in line with the machine. Concentrate more on the top of your curtain and let the curtain tape just come through. Just make sure that you caught it all the way down. Another tip. Don't go bat out of hell here. It's not worth it. You just have to unpick it and restart again. Now cut the tape again about three inches. Be generous because the string then is, you've got enough to tie. Tuck it in again. Like I say, pull the underside back a little bit as I'm doing here so that and make sure that curtain tape is lying nice and flat. This is why it's crucial that you've got it nicely crisp fold. So like I've done there is I've just folded it over and then I will tuck in the tape as neat as possible and that there's no pieces hanging out so they're all parallel to each other. Now sew right to the end. Now fold it over, fold the curtain tape over, 
get your pair of scissors and cut inside that three inch tape make sure that the curtain isn't peeping out so just cut it you don't need to be 100% straight it's just nice to have a nice neat edge remove any pins that are there go right to the end when you're finished fold it back over now put a few pins as you notice I've done them length sideways again not lengthways sideways just in case the machine catches the pin shouldn't do now this is where you're going to have to use your fingers to feel where everything is once this is finished but pin it all the way across making sure that it's lying straight and flat tackle cut any stray cottons that are coming out now turn it over feel where the where the tape is as you can see I'm feeling with my fingers put your sewing machine back on and sew all the way down making sure that you're not too high up that you're catching the string and not too low down that you are missing the tape use your fingers all the way down to feel again don't go bat out of hell this is quite a crucial step and you don't want to be unpicking it notice now how smooth it is no ruffles but just before you finish just double check that you have caught all the curtain tape you can always go back and sew it but just double check and cut any excess cotton go to the bottom hem and now tack down the flap that's sticking out and you finish your curtain now don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you need any advice just leave a message and I'll get back to you. Stay safe and have a good day. Bye.